if you download the pattern and you cut it out, I've traced it onto tissue paper. This is what it looks like. Okay? So it's actually just a single pattern piece, which is super easy. And you just cut two of these for every pair of leggings that you want to make. Okay? So I'm going to make two pairs today. One out of this crazy red chevron and one out of just this plain black fabric. So I know it's super bright. Like I said, um, it's early morning here, so the sun is streaming in my window. Um, and I'm just going to move you all right over here so that you can see as I'm cutting, okay? So we're going to cut out the chevron pieces, leggings first. And um, you can cut out both pattern pieces at the same time. You just want to make sure that you cut them in mirror. And when you are cutting something in mirror, that means that um, they are opposite each other. Okay, right? So um, if I cut it out like this, I'll have this piece that's this way and this piece that's this way. So they actually are opposites. Okay, so you, what you wouldn't want to do is if I stacked the pieces right side and right side up, then you won't have it in mirror. Okay, so hi Judy from Wisconsin. I'm originally from Wisconsin too, so I always love um, seeing people say hi from there. Um, I mentioned earlier, for those of you just popping on, I live in Hong Kong, so I'm 12 hours ahead of Eastern time. So it's early morning here and the sun is streaming in my window making it very bright over here i'll move over to my sewing machines in a few minutes and it won't be quite so bright but for the moment this is where my cutting table is so we'll try to make do here all right so we're going to cut two of these leggings and i'm going to cut them together to make it easier okay and then we're going to cut two from the black and then we'll be ready to sew up two pairs and it will not take very long. So my plan is to show you two ways to do this. One, um, another Wisconsin lady, yay! Um, one, using the serger and the sewing machine, which is how I generally make them. And then another time, I'm going to sew these only using my sewing machine, okay, which is uh, just to show you that it's possible for those of you who don't have a serger, and you know, for many years, I sewed lots and lots of things for my kids without a serger, so it's definitely possible, and um, especially with knit fabric, which is this stretchy fabric, um, it's great for sewing with knits. Okay, so um, I'll just show you that there's, yeah, the two different ways to do it using the two different types of machines and give you some tips and tricks around along the way for um, how I put these together. So once these are cut out, I can actually sew a pair of leggings in um, probably under 20 minutes because I've done it many, many times. So um, it's just fun to see that maybe with some practice, you could do this. Oh, I guess this is in two pieces. Um, so you want to make sure when you're cutting out your leggings that this fabric has stretched both ways. Okay, you can see both ways of stretch. Um, but when you're looking at which way has the most stretch, you generally want to put that on the... Um, on the up and down. So this is the edge of my fabric where it was. Uh oh. These aren't going to be long enough. Bummer. I didn't even open this up to look at this. I just bought this is brand new black fabric. And look it, I'm going to be missing uh, um, two inches off that. So if I made it with this, they'd be capri length, which is not what I was going for. I wonder if I made them, I really don't want that way. All right, let me grab a different piece of fabric. We're going to abandon this black for now. And I'm going to just grab here. 
I have this um, sort of reddish pink, we'll make a pair of leggings out of this. So um, when you're making leggings, you want to make sure that the um, fabric is um, not 100% cotton. Usually you want a cotton lycra or a cotton spandex for leggings because it's really good and stretchy both ways and it also has um, you also have um, a good recovery. So if you make leggings out of um, knit fabric that is not as stretchy or doesn't, it will get stretched out. So no one wants saggy leggings, at least I don't want saggy leggings. You know what they look like, the knees get bunchy and um, it's not a good look. So. Um, you want to make sure that you, um, yeah, again, use fabric. A cotton lycra or cotton spandex has just a little bit of synthetic fabric in it instead of 100% cotton, and that really um, just gives it a great stretch. So you can just, you can tell when you're holding it that it feels different than maybe, say, like a t-shirt fabric that's all cotton, and um, one, that sort of fabric doesn't stretch as well both ways. It just kind of stretches one way. And then also you can tell if you pull it really hard that it doesn't always go back, okay? So that's an easy way to kind of tell what, if it's a good fabric. But if you go to any fabric store or look online and just type in cotton lycra or cotton spandex, that will give you, the spandex will feel a little bit more like um, athletic wear, and the cotton lycra will feel a little bit more like um, leggings that you would just buy in the store. So you want it to be stretchy enough that they won't stretch out, but you'll have a really good fit. Okay, so there is my second pair of leggings. All right. And we've got two pieces here. Sherry, hi, glad to see you. For those of you who are watching for the first time, I'm so excited you're here. I'm Emily from Naptime Creations and I love making, sewing, um, I love sewing clothes for my kids and I love creating free patterns that I um, get to share with um, all of you who um, follow my blog or follow my Facebook page. So. I'd love for you to um, subscribe and follow if you haven't. And if you think you might sew yourself, then you can join our pattern group, which is a great place to show off what you've made. And you can post um, the things that you've made from my patterns. And I just yesterday, someone posted a beautiful t-shirt dress, which is a t-shirt um, then has a skirt attached. And it's so cute. So it's such a fun way to be able to show off what you're making and see what other people are making and maybe get ideas on what you can make. So um, if you didn't see the beginning, we are making just classic girls leggings. Okay, so it's gonna be easy. I did not make these. These are what I could find this morning. It's um, winter here, so we haven't been um, wearing leggings for a while. So you can find my group. It's linked in the description um, along with the link to this free pattern, absolutely free, in um, sizes 18 months to 10 years. So if you have a girl that's in any of those ages, um, you can sew this up yourself. So um, so glad that you're here watching and we're going to get sewing. So like I said, I'm going to um, give this, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One using both of my sewing machines. Okay, this is a serger, um, which is what you, any um, clothes that you would buy in the store, the seams are sewed with. So it like finishes, let me see, sorry. I can show you on this one because it's um, you, white. So it finishes the edge and kind of wraps the thread all around and you don't have any um, like loose threads. Okay, so that's what a serger would do. And then the sewing machine, of course, is just like a regular straight stitch, but I have a tip to show you how to make this fun um, double stitch on a regular machine, which gives, makes great waistbands and great hems, okay? 
so you can see all that. So, um, CN, you could do it from a newborn, but you'd have to cut the pattern down. So the, the one that I provide is starting a little bit older, but actually I think there are some um, free newborn legging patterns and you could use this tutorial to put together any sort of leggings, even if you use a pattern from a different um, company. Okay, so if you find another free legging pattern, you could still put it together how I'm gonna show you and um, it wouldn't matter if it's different kinds. So leggings all go together the same amount. Um, the other thing I need is elastic. So I'm gonna just pop over to the other side of the room and grab my elastic and then I'll be right back and we'll start sewing. Okay, I'm back, sorry. Um, this is a non-roll elastic and I'm using three quarter inch for today. So don't you love Facebook? It's backwards. So if you can read backwards, then you can totally see what this is. But it's um, three quarter inch non-roll elastic and this is what I'm gonna use for my leggings today. Um, you can't, you can do a kind of a fake serger stitch on a regular sewing machine, but they're actually two different machines. Um, and then there's another machine called a cover stitch machine, which I don't have, which does like professional hems that you would see on a t-shirt. So that's another machine entirely, but I just right now get away with these two because we live in a very small apartment. And of course, I don't have all the money in the world to buy all the sewing machines that I want. So this is what I make do with today. So, um, all right, in a couple minutes, I'll call my daughter in here to um, measure her waist and see how long we can do that. So, all right, the first one, we are going to um, make this red chevron, pretty crazy, um, might be kind of wild, but we'll go with it. So, um, in with leggings, there are a front and a back. And on the back, generally the rise, which is what we call the part between like your belly button and um, your crotch, which is a, I know a great term, but it's kind of a sewing term that is hard to get away from using. Um, this curved piece, the back part will be more curvy and will be longer than the front. So if you're confused as to which is the front and the back, you can fold it in half and you can see that the back is a longer curve and more curved and then the front is shorter shorter and not as curvy so the first thing that the first step that we're going to do is we're going to sew the back to the back and we're going to sew the front to the front okay and i'm going to use the serger for this one um because this is the serger pair, all right? So I said I'm gonna do two pairs, one using the serger and my sewing machine and one just using the sewing machine to show you that it's possible even if you just own one um, simple sewing machine. And you can pick up um, a sewing machine at Joann's or at Walmart for 50 or $60, you can get a basing machine. So it really is not a lot of money to pick up a basic machine. Um, all my patterns include a um, foot for my sewing machine. You know, I would direct, I would, um, Kaylee, I would comp, um, direct, blah, blah. I would contact the company directly. So if it's Singer, I just would contact them, or if it's Janome, whatever, I would just, I would just contact them directly to get a new foot. I think that'd be the best place, um, to get a new sewing machine foot. So, we're gonna sew with a 3 8 seam allowance, which is just about one centimeter or 3 8 of an inch around the side. Whoops, that's the wrong foot. And I love sewing barefoot. I feel like I have better control when I sew. All right, so that's the front seam right there. Okay, and um, yeah, if anyone else has tips on where she can um, find, find a foot, please chime in. You guys can answer each other's questions almost probably as well as I can answer them. So now we're gonna sew the back. Front. 
front. And so if we open this up, it's starting to look actually like, you know, a pair of leggings, right? So there's a couple things that you'll want to check when you're making this. And um, if you have a pair of leggings that already fit your child, it will be easy to check into. So right now I'm thinking this looks actually really long from um, where I want this to be. I, and I'm, we're going to fold over a little bit for the top but I'm still thinking this looks really long for my daughter who's super petite. So a great way to do this is to compare it to leggings you already have. So I can see that when I fold this down, even if I fold this over once, it's still gonna be a, probably about a half inch too tall than, um, than I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna sew the inseam and then I will trim the top and um, comparing to another pair of leggings that you have. You can also use those these to compare like the legs, okay? Are the legs gonna be too wide? And all kinds of things. So um, I'm using between a fourth and a half inch seam allowance on the serger. I'm um, shooting for three eighths of an inch. So that's always kind of what I say is my added seam allowance and so I shoot for that. So, all right, so before I sew the inseam, I'm gonna um, hem the bottom because you look and you can see that the bottoms of leggings, especially in tiny sizes, are very small, okay? My daughter has very tiny ankles, she's two. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold over the hem while it's open and flat like this. Okay, and I'm gonna stitch it across and it'll be much easier than trying to get in there and go around a tiny little circle. Okay, so I'm gonna fold over a half inch seam and um, I'm sewing on a regular sewing machine, but I'm using two threads on top and on the bottom I have, in my bobbin I have threaded a thread called woolly nylon and woolly nylon is a stretchy um, thread made out of nylon and um, it's perfect for sewing with knits and it also gives you a chance to use a double stitch instead of a single stitch which gives a much more professional look so I'll show you on one side and um, then we'll talk about it before I sew the other side so I'm folding a half inch back and I'm gonna just lengthen my stitch length to three, which just gives it a little bit longer stitch and a little bit stretchier. And I'm not going back and forth on the ends because I will be catching up the seam. So here, look at how super awesome that looks and look at how stretchy it is. So when, um, my daughter is putting her feet through the leggings. She won't stretch out the seams. She won't be popping the stitches. Um, so the back looks like, or the front looks like this, and the back looks like this. It's a little zigzag of the woolly nylon thread, okay? So we'll, I'm gonna do the other side, the other hem. And then We'll sew up and we'll compare to the leggings that I already have. You know, I try in my patterns to make the fit the best that it can be, but um, you know, you can't fit every child. And especially in a free pattern, I'm just trying to kind of hit the middle of the road. So. Um, you definitely, the best way to use the free patterns is to compare them to an article of clothing you already have that fits great and then go from there and make some small edits. So um, Angie, I'm going to show you how to do this on a regular machine next. So this is a regular sewing machine. It's a higher end model Janome, but it's definitely um, has all the basics of just a regular sewing machine and you can um, do this stitch that I just did on any regular sewing machine with a double needle 
So let me see. I don't have one in here. A double needle is just um, has two needles coming out, and so you thread two through. So yeah, the top thread is just regular cotton, and then the bottom is the stretch. So um, yes, uh, any brother you could actually just use the two threads on it. And if you go to my blog and to the legging pattern. I think I've also linked to the tutorial which shows you how to thread your machine and get everything organized for using the double needle. Um, but you can also just go to naptimecreations.com and search the perfect hem. And I've made a whole video showing you how to use the double needle, how to thread your machine, how to wind the bobbin with the stretchy thread and get everything organized like that. So I can also add it to the link of this video afterwards. Um, but I didn't do it ahead of time. I forgot about that. So um, we're going to go to the next step, which is sewing the inseam of the pants. So I'm going to start at one ankle, go down and up to the other ankle. And on this one, again, I'm using my serger. The next one, I will just use the sewing machine to show you how it looks um, using the sewing machine. sure that the end of course lines up at the bottom and all right so very quickly we have a pair of leggings that are coming together um, really easy and cute so wow these are gonna be wild but there we go and I didn't match my chevron because generally my daughter is going to be wearing a tunic or a dress that will probably cover the top part anyway so um there we go all right so now I am going to trim the top because these are looking really high waisted and my daughter is teeny tiny and I don't want them high waisted so I'm going to match up the seams here hey Rosie can you come here for a minute Okay, and now it is going to be folded um, over a little bit. So actually, this isn't going to be too bad. Hi, can I measure you? All right, so this is my daughter Rose. Hey, Rosie, can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> um, and I'm going to measure her waist while I have her here to see how long I should cut the elastic. She was in the other room being a good little girl watching some TV while mommy works. And she is a tiny little thing. So 20 is your waist. Is that, your, is that how long you are? Yeah. I'm not sure. I feel like you should stand up. Oh, no, 19 is her waist. So, um, um, so anyway, so I'm going to cut and show how to weave the ends. In the, yes, yes, yes. I will show you how I weave the ends of the serger in. Do you want that? Okay, get down. Um, to weave the ends of the serger in, I, um, um, to wait, so to finish the bottom of the serger, I use a darning needle, which is a blunt tipped, it's not sharp, um, needle with a large eye. And I, I'll come up there. Okay, and so this is hanging out, and this is kind of a raw edge. So if I just cut this right here, the bottom of my leggings, um, this could start to fray. So you don't want that. So you either sometimes I'll fold it over and I'll stitch it down with a sewing machine and sometimes I will just use this needle which is pretty fast to um, finish it up so here's what you do real quick um, so I stick the darning needle 
into my seam. Okay, so can you see that? Stick it in. And then you're going to grab these ends and thread them through as much as possible through the eye. So you want something with a large eye so you can get it through. Okay, and then you just pull it through and pull it tight and you've now pulled the loose end through the edge and it's over here and you can just cut that. If you're really nervous about it fraying, you can also add a little bit of fray check, which is a liquid glue that's meant for fabric, okay? But that makes that edge really nice and it's a super simple solution. And this one, it looks like I cut it super short, so I'll show you the other um, way that I do it. So what I do sometimes is I fold under any sort of any thread that's there, fold it over, and then I just do a quick stitch with my double needle down and back. And that also um, finishes that loose seam allowance. Okay, so obviously I have some threads to trim. But so just tacking it over will also keep it from um, fraying. Okay, so two ways to do it. Um, pull, the, pull the thread through with a darning needle or tack it down um, with your machine. All right, so I wanted to trim just a little bit off this um, because I think it's gonna be too high in the rise. So I'm just gonna take about a half inch off and I'm not cutting both layers together because the back is, um, higher than the front. So I will affect the fit if I just cut it off together. So I'm just going to cut around here and I would make a mental note the next time I sew this that this size is too high for my very petite daughter. I mean she's almost three but she's still very firmly in a 2T size. So my boys were never like this. They're also um, very, very big and they, they fit, like they were always moving into the next size well before they were actually that age. So um, this has been a new experience with a petite little um, Asian girl for us to have, which is, it's been totally fine, but she is very small. So she um, is, was 19 inches and looks like Barbara has another great tip for securing your serger lines. Um, 19 inches, so I'm going to cut it exactly what she was measured because even though I'm going to sew, I'm going to overlap it, I want it, I want to have a little stretch. I don't want it to just sit on her waist exactly. So the overlap will then give it, it'll have to be a little stretchy when she's wearing it. All right, so um, I have some very basic ways to do things and I like to keep things really simple. So um, the way I'm going to sew this on is I'm going to start in the back, which you can tell it's the back because it's higher. I'm going to start in the back at the seam and I'm actually just going to serge and stretch this around as I serge it. Okay? So um, I don't want to cut the elastic with the serger but I do want the threads to cut it. So you can also do this with a zigzag and I'll show you when I do the next um, version. Okay, so I have to stretch this a little bit because the elastic is slightly smaller, not much, but slightly smaller than the leggings. Um, you want to make sure you have a little bit of overlap, okay? Um, okay, so I have a little bit of overlap. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew that down on my regular, 
Um, a serger and an overlock are the same, yes. It just, I think, is different places in the world that call it different things. So, um, yes, serger, overlock. All right, so now we have elastic that is just kind of attached on one side inside my leggings, and we're gonna finish the leggings with one simple step, which is to fold the elastic over one more time to the inside, and I'm gonna use my regular sewing machine now with the double needle, and I'm gonna just stitch along the edge to secure the elastic in and be done. So let's um, line, I'm gonna again start in the back. If you have a tag that you wanna add on, this would be a great time to add that. And you just wanna make sure that you're just folding over the elastic and not bunching up other fabric. And I'm actually sewing through the bottom of the elastic because this is a stretchy thread. So it will stretch as we're pulling these on. It will allow for the stretch um, that you need in your leggings. If you're not using a double needle, you'll want to use a zigzag or another um, stretchy stitch because you want it to be able to move and stretch. Okay, and go back and forth to secure it. And the leggings are finished. So I'll show you, here's what the double needle looks like on the waistband. And um, here's our leggings. So in a 2T, with a little edit on the waist for the rise, but otherwise that goes together super fast. So um, I was just going to compare one more time to these. And these are a little bit bigger because um, these are only 24 month leggings, but looks like the fit is going to be really good. So I don't have a left hand sewing machine. Facebook flips everything. So not left-handed, not left-handed sewing machine, not backwards. When I'm showing you, like if I show you this, see, backwards. So um, yeah, so I don't know why it's backwards, but it's so weird. So yeah, check out the video with the um, woolly nylon. It's a, it gives you some um, great tips and hopefully we'll get you started. I think it just adds such a more professional look to um, my sewing and I feel like since I started doing that it's just everything um, has such a great a great finish and a better finish when I'm making it so um, I'm going to because I know that the last one was a little too tall before I sew and have to cut cut it differently I'm just going to cut off the top here okay because I know I already know that um, I want it a little bit shorter. All right, I'm going to take the woolly nylon out and I'm going to take off my double needle because I'm just going to show you if you just have a basic sewing machine with, you know, all like the normal basic things. Now, the one thing you will need is a knit needle and um, a knit needle you can usually, I mean, it'll say like stretch needle at the store, but it's often marked with a little bit of yellow on the band. So um, that's a great way to tell if your needles are all mixed up, which one is a knit. And here's the double, what the double needle looks like. Okay. So that's simple. Hey, Rose. Rosie. Can you come here? Yeah. Can you try them on, try on my leggings? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll put Rose on, Rose's, Rose, the leggings on Rose, and then um, you can see what they look like. Just a second, we're gonna have a little um, changing room down here. There you go. These are gonna be pretty fun leggings, huh? Look at how crazy they are. So pretty, huh? Mommy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. We just, oh, goodness. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Wow. We're knocking into everything. We're knocking into everything. Coming up. Okay. So, here you go. Can you see? All right. So, there are these very wild, crazy leggings. We'll have to find a top to go with that. Yeah, these, these aren't capris. They, they're long enough, I think. Um, but I do like capri length leggings too. So, um, does not go great with this chevron dress, which I also made. Um, but anyway, I think these are going to be really great for winter and so cute. So we're going to sew her up another pair here. Do you want me to take them off? Whoa! Sorry. Sorry. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> A little camera malfunction. <laughs> Sorry, you guys like fell into my head. Um, anyway, we're, I'm going to take these off because our house is really hot and um, she's going to bake if she's wearing um, long pants still. All right. Do you want to put on your other short ones? No, you can just go watch. Okay. Mommy will be out in a minute. Um, okay. We're back. We'll, we'll uh, figure out from there. Okay, um, so uh, for the second version, we're just going to use a regular sewing machine with regular thread, not even woolly nylon, and I'll just show you um, what some tips you can do with that. So I need to just go grab, grab a bobbin that's already threaded so that I don't have to um, thread one. So I'm just, uh, well, quick, I'm just threading my machine with regular cotton thread on top and regular cotton thread on the bottom. And I used a knit needle, which is marked on the package. And then also usually is dipped in yellow. So you can tell the difference between a regular needle and your knit needle. So you do want to make sure if you are sewing with knits that you use a knit needle. Okay. So, um, Yes, Rose is my daughter. She is adopted from China, and we've had her a year and a few months. So she's just over two and a half and um, has adapted so well to our family. So we are very blessed to have her. And um, it's been so fun to sew for a girl because I have um, two boys before her. And so, of course, sewing... There's so many, so many cute girl things. So I wanted to, yeah, I'm so excited to have a girl to sew for and also just to have a daughter in our family. So, um, all right, so the steps are the same. I'm going to sew the back inseam. I'm going to sew the front um, rise, front to front, back to back. Okay, and I'm using a 3 8 seam allowance. And when you're sewing on a regular machine, you want to either use this lightning bolt, which is the, a, um, a, a knit stitch, or just a regular zigzag. I kind of just like um, a regular zigzag. I feel like sometimes the lightning bolt um, stitch makes kind of stretches things out. Um, so I'm just going to do a zigzag, and I'm going to do it along the edge of both of the rises. So. I don't know about um, Valencia. I don't know about Halloween costumes. Um, I might. My kids go to a school where they don't dress up, and we live in Hong Kong, and there's no trick or treating. So sometimes I like. I love to make costumes, but um, we just don't live in a place where Halloween is very big. So I. I don't know. Sometimes if we have a party to go to, I'll definitely do costumes because I do love making costumes but we just aren't in a place that's very conducive to halloween or halloween costumes but i have in the past made some fun things for the boys and of course you can pin if this is your first time making something i would suggest pinning the fabric together before you sew um but one i'm trying to do this fairly quickly and two I have made these um, so many times that 
Um, I just kind of know what to do. Not a left-handed sewing machine. Um, it's Facebook reverses everything. So anyway, yeah, weird. It's weird. You can see that like the text is even backwards. Um, it's reversed. So I don't know why. It does that, but it does. In London, is it it's 2 o'clock p.m. or a.m.? Hopefully you're not up at 2 a.m. a.m. So, yes, please share this video. If you want to be able to come back and watch it another time, or um, if you know someone who would enjoy it, please hit the share button below. I would love for you to share it. And, um, of course, I'd also love for you to follow my Facebook page. Um, I will be selling on Mondays at 7.45 Eastern on Spaceship and Laser Beams um, every week now, so I'm this will be a new thing. So I'm really excited to join the team and be part of what's going on over here. All right, so we're, we've got those parts done, and then you flip it, 2 a.m. Ah, <laughs> kind of late. I guess this isn't the best time for the European audience, but even later is... The more the middle of the night. So um, again, because this is a tiny size and I don't want to, my Facebook page is linked in the above comments. You can just hit it. It's um, Naptime Creations. Um, I'm going to hem the bottom before I sew up the inseam because otherwise it's a tiny little hole and I don't like doing that. So I'm going to fold over a half inch back and I'm using my, I'm just going to zigzag. I'm using my zigzag stitch zigzag stitches are stretchy so even though I don't have woolly nylon in the bottom it will still allow for this seam to stretch and not break as I'm putting ankles through or other things through okay so you can see it will still stretch and give as you're going isn't it amazing that from all over the world um, that we can, you know, connect like this on Facebook and so many different time zones and I'm, you know, in Asia sewing and people in the U.S. are watching. It's just, technology is amazing. I mean, love-hate relationship for sure with it when it doesn't work, but overall, I find technology to be so amazing. So, um, all right. We now are going to sew the inseam, okay? I haven't really made too many pillowcase dresses. That's not, that is something that I would love to try, and I've made lots of dresses, but um, not that kind specifically. All right, so I want to make sure I'm lined up here. And I'm just zigzagging the inseam. You want to line up your to the, the middle seam there. And then we'll go down the other leg. Whoops, that got off a little bit. And of course I'm sewing everything with the right sides together. So the, the right side of the fabric that's gonna be on the outside when I'm finished is on the inside while I'm sewing. it and then clip it. So let's see what we've got. We're just ready to um, so this is almost done. We just have to put in the waistband. This is um, stretch. It's a cotton 
um, Lycra, which is um, a cotton with that has a little extra Lycra in it for stretch, which is perfect for um, when you're making leggings like this. Okay, so we're gonna put in a waistband and then we're finished. So two pairs in not too long. That's it's especially you know I'm talking as I'm doing this. So if I was just sewing these, I feel like leggings are something I could make very quickly make a, make a lot of. So probably in an afternoon I could make the four or five pairs that my daughter would need for the winter. Um, all right, so to put this on with um, a zig, the zigzag, we're gonna start again on the back seam and then we're gonna just stretch this slightly. It doesn't need to stretch much because really in leggings, the elastic is similar to the pants width. It's not, I'm not really gathering it in, okay? And I'm gonna just do it a tiny, maybe, not even a fourth inch, an eighth inch down from the top of the pants. And I'm gonna put the zigzag right into the elastic. And my fabric is curling a little bit, so. So I'm kind of just going mostly on the elastic, but a little bit, um, one needle is kind of going off as I go around. And stretching, when you get back around, you want this to overlap slightly. So you need to stretch whatever you need to stretch to accomplish an overlap. You definitely want to stretch it a little bit. Okay. And then to secure the elastic in place, we're gonna, um, I just stitch down the back seam. So stitch down that. You won't even see that because it'll be folded under, but that just secures where the elastic is overlapped. Okay. And then the final step is just to fold this under. And then we're gonna stitch around one more time on the base of the elastic and I'll show it. So um, Paula, the pattern for these free leggings is above and um, you can grab, grab it. It comes in sizes 18 months to 10 years. So I hope you'll be able to use it. Go by the measurement chart for sizing and then um, use another pair of leggings that you might already have to compare the pattern pieces as well for even a better fit. So the best way to get a good fit is just to compare to something you already have that fits well. So I'm just sewing around the base of the elastic now, still with the zigzag. leggings, right? For underdresses, for an extra layer of warmth. Um, there you go. So you can see I got a couple of um, puckers. So it's because it's stretchy and as I go along it sometimes gathers a little bit. But um, like I said before, usually the waistband is not exposed. Um, when she she's wearing a shirt that's over it, usually a dress that's longer. So um, it's, I'm not really worried about it. So um, my machine is a Janome. It's a higher end model because it does a lot of fancy stitches, but um, I even a basic Janome machine, they're great. So I really love it. Um, I've had really great luck with it and great success and it's been a super um, reliable machine. So, all right, let's, we've got two pairs of 
leggings, these kind of maroon ones. I'm going to have to make some clothes to go with these color um, leggings since the black ones didn't work out. And these crazy chevron ones. So maybe I'll make a top and these will be pajamas. Who knows? But um, so anyway, two pairs of leggings in not very long. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to my Facebook page or lives here on Spaceship and Laser Beams to um, find out when I go live. I'll be sewing every Monday evening at 7.45 Eastern PM. And um, if you have suggestions on what you might want to see me sew, you can head over to my blog and check out all my free patterns. And um, I'd be happy to... Um, I'd be happy to sew any of the, the free patterns that I have on my site. So I also just got permission to sew up another pattern designer's patterns. And so I'll be able to show you some of my other favorite patterns that, that I didn't necessarily um, create, but that I'd like to show you. So anyway, thanks for watching. I, I was so happy to be here this morning, and I'll be back next week. And um, we'll see you later. Have a great week. Thanks so much for watching.